Okay, this video is gonna be slightly different to some of my other videos because I've already drawn out the uh, picture with pencil and I've already started to ink it, but I'm just gonna show you some of my inking process rather than take you through the whole um, drawing step by step. The main reason is that it's quite fiddly to draw, concentrate, and film sometimes. So I've uh, decided as this drawing is slightly more complex than some of the others that I've done on YouTube, um, that I'd do a lot of it off camera and just show you some of the inking in process. Now, when I'm inking pictures in, I may do so with, <clears throat> excuse me, with ink and a brush, sometimes with a dip pen uh, or sometimes with a, uh, a sort of a multi-liner type pen. So I'm just gonna show you the differences um, between those few things first of all. So a dip pen is something that you might see on uh, sort of in an antique shop these days, really. You don't really see them too often, uh, but some co uh, cartoonists use these to dip the, uh, the nib in the ink and then outline images. So this is just a standard dip pen. I, I use all different uh, combinations. The nibs pull out of them and you can change those around. Um, I won't bother pulling this one out now because I, I uh, might bend it. They're quite easy to bend if you're not careful. Um, so that's a dip pen, as I say, dip in the ink and then draw away. Um, the ink tends to take longer to dry if you do um, use this type of pen to, to ink in. Um, other pens that I use are these types, which are just multi-liners. I use several different brands, I'm not too picky really. I, I tend to use this one here, which is a Pigma Micron, which I, I use, I suppose I use it most, but there's no particular reason for that really. I do use the, the Copic multi-liners as well, um, or any other multi-liner. These ones are relatively thin. I think they're the thinnest ones they do actually. Um, well, this one is at least, if you can uh, see the, the size there, it's a 005. Um, but again, I use many different types, sizes, styles and that kind of thing. Um, I've, I'll show you briefly how many uh, I've got laying about in one of my uh, art drawers, just to give you, give you an idea of the um, types that I use. So I've got lots of different pens in there, um, and that's just a, a small sample of them. I do use them. But, um, the nibs tend to be quite fragile, certainly on multi-liners, the thinner multi-liners, and because I often use them on rough paper, the nibs wear through quite quickly, which is why I've got so many different pens and different options there. So I'm just gonna start by outlining some of this picture. As I say, I've already um, drawn most of it in using a 2B pencil. I just use this just a standard pencil for that and the mechanical pencil for some of the finer details. Um, but that's all I'm gonna do in this video. Um, and then perhaps for the next video, it'll be back to painting, but probably painting a different picture, probably not uh, not this one. I might film some of it, but we'll see what uh, how time permits. But for now, I'm just gonna go through and um, ink some of it. I've got just a spare piece of paper here. I usually lay that down just so I've got something to rest on because it's quite easy to, to smudge all of the, all of the ink. Um, the size, paper I'm using is A4, so printer paper size. I've got quite big hands, so it might look a bit smaller, I don't know, but um, that's the, the, the size that, um, that this is on. So I'm gonna start the inking process now, and uh, you can see roughly what I do. I usually work much faster than this with the pen strokes and that kind of thing. Um, I'm doing it slightly slower than usual. Two reasons for that. One, so you can see what I'm actually doing. Obviously it's not, not rocket science, is it really? I'm just uh, essentially just going over the pencil lines that I've already drawn freehand. Um, but the other reason is I can't get close enough to the paper to see what I'm doing properly. So I'm having to hold the pen slightly further away than what I usually would, which is uh, less accurate. So. That's another reason why I'm being slightly slower. Otherwise, I should just block the uh, camera view and you won't see what's going on. And the scene is just a, an autumn, standard sort of autumn scene that I do. Um, I've just got a badger 
uh, in place on this one. I've done a few mice dotted around the scene, but I generally paint, as you, as you probably know, if you follow my work, lots of autumn style work, lots of winter work and Halloween, Christmas, that kind of thing. It translates quite well into the, the children's type books that I'm often asked to illustrate. And the pencil lines that I've got on here already, I'm just using them as a guide. I don't necessarily go straight over them. Sometimes I'll change my mind part way through. Sometimes I go over them exactly, but it's a bit of a, a mix and match um, kind of thing, really. Sometimes I see little improvements that I can make. Sometimes I just go completely wrong <laughs> and have to try and put it right on the spot. It all depends how it, uh, how it goes, but that's how it is. Some people use what's called um, a light box for this, what I'm doing here, which is essentially where you, a lot of people think it's cheating, but I don't personally think it's cheating. It's where you draw your image as I have, and then you put the paper that you want the final image to be on on top, you shine a light through it, and then trace over your own original work. So it's, it's not really cheating because you have drawn the original work. If you were tracing someone else's work, then yeah, fair enough, that's cheating. But um, I, I I don't really do that, to be honest. I, I have got a light box, um, and it's okay if you're trying to, if you're trying to meet a deadline for a client, um, and it's something that's very, very detailed that you've already drawn, and you just need to transfer it to a different type of paper, then it can be, um, it can be a, a bit of a time saver. But I have to say, I, I tend to, I tend just to go over the pencil line directly and actually start with the paper that I want the finished art to be on in the first place mainly because I always I always seem to prefer the, the original one that I've drawn anyway so I find it really annoying when I've done that and then when I trace it onto the paper that I actually want um, it never looks quite as good as the original so I tend just to freehand everything on the pa on the desired paper to start with um, and go from there otherwise I, I usually regret it okay so I'm just going to move the Add along slightly. I'm just going to start work here on the on the badger. I haven't made very many videos lately. It's mainly just time constraints. I've been busy working on uh, some artwork for clients. Um, I have another day job as well. Which takes up a lot of my time and um, also took my little boy on a survival weekend, well, evening kind of thing um, the other week, which has taken up quite a lot of my time getting ready for that. You might hear my dogs in the background. I always say that because they're usually making some form of a uh, noise and barking today which is uh, slightly different to usual they're usually snorting below my art table looking for anything that I've dropped I'm just going to move this piece of paper now because I'm getting too close to the edge and it keeps uh, sliding off. I'm losing control of what I'm trying to do.
I've messed the eye up slightly there. It's because I'm too far away from the, the paper, which is why that happens, which is why I don't always like filming when I'm doing something slightly, slightly more fiddly. And this particular picture, if you can bear with me, just slide my chair back and try and find it if I can. It's actually based on, not based on as such, but a, a card design that um, I did very recently. Sorry about that, I had to uh, cut the video because uh, I went to uh, get the card to show you and uh, I'd, I'd moved it and forgotten, so I had to go and find it. So I'm basing this picture loosely on this character here that, um, that I drew recently. These are now um, available as cards in some shops and um, in my Etsy store. If you'd like to see that, the link is in the description. I've um, done a few other cards as well recently, which are now available. Again, they're available in select sort of smaller non-chain shops and uh, through my Etsy store. Um, you can purchase those. This one is actually for bonfire night, so it's all kind of dark in the in the background with a light foreground. And this one here. I've got some others as well, but I won't show you all of them now. We'll get back to the uh, bit to the drawing. I just want to do that before I forget because uh, I probably will. Right. So here we go. Back to the uh, back to the inking. You can probably hear my hand dragging on the picture then. That's why I use that bit of paper because it just smudges the ink if it's there or the um, graphite if it's not. So that's why I tend to put that there. Sometimes these types of drawings, I do freehand them in ink from the start. And don't actually bother with the um, bother with the pencil. The main reason I've done the pencil first here is so that I can do it for the purposes of this video because it just gives me a little bit of a, a reference from a distance. Because otherwise, it's quite difficult seeing exactly what you what you're doing and sort of having that control over the pen or, or brush. At the time of drawing this, <clears throat> it is harvest time here in the in the UK. All the combine harvesters and tractors are out fiddling about on the fields. So I like to try and do this kind of artwork this time of year when possible. Sort of work my granddad used to do actually, he was a, a farmer. So I'm just dragging my chair around if you can hear strange noises. I'm just doing a few autumn leaves along the bottom here. You don't always have to do that, but it just gives you sort of a hint of the, the season that you're trying to, to paint. I mean, it's pretty obvious in this painting any, uh, picture anyway, so it uh, doesn't matter so much, but it all helps. And I'm just leaving a little chunk out of this uh, corner on the cob here, because obviously this little mouse has been there. Uh, I'm going to go at that. I'm just leaving some of the lines slightly jagged just to give the characters a little bit of texture like fur. I 
don't want solid lines here, so I'm just going to do sort of jaggedy dot kind of things. I want a solid line there though, because that's a piece of um, string that's holding this bird of straw together. Just put some random lines on there. Mouse is going to have a little pumpkin of his own there, so I'll probably go over that with a little bit of orange later. And again, if you are watching this video, <clears throat> excuse me, and you do uh, either follow my art or enjoy it, or just uh, trying to sort of learn how to do things, sorry if you can hear my phone buzzing in the background. There's always something in this house. <laughs> but if you can, if you can, please like and subscribe. That really helps out because it's a brand new channel, and I'm uh, trying to uh, build a bit of an audience. But nothing online is easy these days, so. If you could like and subscribe and comment, it really does help out a lot. More than you know, probably. Obviously, the more comments and likes and that kind of thing, the more visible videos tend to tend to appear, appear in the uh, feeds on, on YouTube and that kind of thing. So, if you enjoy it, please don't forget to, to like and subscribe. It really does help. I know a lot of my fans and, and people who like my Facebook page, again, that's in the, in the comments, that are often um, based in the US. I don't know how you, in the US, how corn or, or um, hay is left in, in fields. I don't, I don't know. In, in the UK, we have these sort of round, large round bales. It's probably similar, as well as the, the square ones that we've got down here. So just in case you're wondering what this is, this is a a uh, straw bale, which I used to play on those as kids. I probably uh, used to drive the farmers mad because every now and then we'd accidentally break one, which we shouldn't have been doing. I don't recommend doing that. But we lived in the countryside and um, it was the sort of thing we used to get up to. was an accident though, I should say. Right, I'm just going to um, ink this last bit in. Decided at the last minute to put this crow in so he wasn't originally going to be in there. I'm 
I'm not going to put too much detail into the badger because I, I should do that afterwards, possibly with a pen or paint. Um, I'll leave it for now because um, sometimes it doesn't look quite right with pens. So I'll see later on if that's uh, if it needs to be with a pen or not. And that's pretty much it for this video. Um, so the next step is painting it, but I'm, I'm, I might make a video on that, but chances are I'll probably do that without. And um, you'll be able to find the actual finished result on my website and more importantly on my Facebook page. So please head on over there. The links are in the comments section. And if you like this video, please give it a like and uh, subscribe to the channel. And the more subscribers I get, the more likes I get, the more videos I do and the more complex things I'll, I'll put on here, um, such as my galaxy paintings that I'm always being asked how I do and that kind of thing. But I'll only be able to do it if we get lots of subscribers and lots of views. So uh, click that button and uh, I'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.